right, let's go ahead and go through the third chapter in Unit 9, and it's pensions. For our objectives, I will calculate pension benefits using various formulas, and I will calculate pension benefits during and after vesting periods. Here you have listed all of our vocabulary words. Make sure that you've taken a look at these before watching the video so that you're familiar as we go through. So looking at our first example, it says Roberto worked for Surgical Tools Corporation for 20 years. His employer offers a pension benefit package with a flat benefit formula using the flat amount of $40 for each year of service to calculate his monthly pension. How much will Roberto month, monthly pension be? So, he was with the company for 20 years, and for each year that he was with the company, he's gonna get $40. So his monthly pension check is going to be $800. All right, go ahead and complete the you do. Um, press pause while you do, and then when you're ready, press play, and we'll get back to it. Okay, it says, Maddie worked for the same company as Roberto for the last X years. She's considering working for Y more years, at which time a flat benefit that Surgical Tools offers will be Z dollars. For each year of service, Write an algebraic expression that expresses Maddie's monthly pension benefits. Well, we know that she's already been there X years, and she plans on being there for Y more years. So I'm going to add how many years she's been there and how many years she plans on being there. Once we get those and add those together, the whole thing is multiplied by whatever the monthly benefit will be on that flat benefit formula, which is Z. So our final answer is X plus Y all times Z. If I wanted, I could distribute it though. And algebraically, it would be X times Z plus Y times Z. Example two, after one year of employment, Roberto's employer from example one offered 2.21 cost of living adjustment to his monthly pension benefit. This year the employer is offering 2.35 COLA, which you'll see from your vocabulary. Determine Roberto's current monthly pension benefit. So we're going to start with the cost of living. And we know that Roberto was getting $800 per month for his pension. And he's getting an increase of 2.21%. Now if I were to write that 2.21 as a percent and convert it to a decimal, I'd be looking at 0 0.0221. And that is just the increase. So if I add a one in front of it and multiply it by 1.0221, the one represents the 100% or the total 800. The 0 .0221 represents the increase. So when I multiply it, I do it all in one big step and it'll be $817.68. Then once I take that, I'm gonna take the 817.68 and take a look at the COLA for the same thought process, it's going to be 1.0235, which is the increase due to COLA. When I multiply that through, I get $836.90 is my increase. And so that will be his new monthly pension benefit. Please press pause, solve this you do. When you're ready, come back and we'll finish it out. Okay, Jackie's monthly pension benefit was originally D dollars each year for the last five years. She's received a 1% COLA. Write an ex exponential expression that represents 
Jackie's current monthly pension benefit. So if we look at this, he was earning, she was earning D dollars, and each year we know that it increased by 1%. So we're going to multiply it by 1.01, .01, and that whole thing is going to happen for five years. And there's our equation. All right, example three. Alex's employer offers an annual pension benefit calculated by multiplying 1.5% of his career average salary times the number of years employed. Alex has kept a list of his annual salaries in the spreadsheet below. Add the cells um, to calculate his annual pension benefit. So what we're going to do is we're actually not going to go through and look at the, as if we were doing it in Excel, we're just going to calculate it. All right, in order to do that, we're going to need a chart that I've now posted on here. So to be able to calculate his annual pension benefit, we're first going to start with the career average salary. So he added all of his averages together, or he added all of his year together, and found his career average salary. So we're going to take that 70,986.68, which was his average, and we're going to multiply it by the percentage multiplier as a decimal, which is 0 0.015, and then we're going to multiply that by his years of service. So once I multiply all of those together, we get an annual pension benefit of $26,620.01. So we're looking considerably over $2,000 a month that he is going to get from his pension. We are going to go ahead and skip the um, number three you do, and we're going to move right into the unit four, or not unit four, the example four um, example. So let's go through it. It says Brian and Marina are married. Each is planning on retiring after 30 years of employment. Marina's worked for the same company the entire 30 years. And for the last three years, she's been making 110,000 per year. Brian's been making the same salary the last three years, but he's only been working there for 15 years. Prior to his current job, he worked 15 years at a competitor and had a final average salary of $60,000. Both employers offered a defined benefit plan that calculated the annual pension as the product of the final three years of average salary, the number of years service, and a 2% multiplier. Calculate and compare Marina and Brian's annual pension upon retirement from Santa Fe. So let's first look at Marina. So it says first we get their average salary. Well, we know the average salary for the last three years is the $110,000, as it told us in the problem. It says we multiply that by the number of years of service. So she wants to retire at 30 years. And then we get our 2% multiplier. So her annual pension benefit is going to be $66,000. But now when we look at Brian, things are a little bit different. For him, the last three years was also $110,000. He earns the same as his wife. But he's only been there for 15 years with the same multiplier of 2%. So his first, or this particular job, he's going to get exactly half which is the $33,000. Then if we do his previous job where his average salary was 60,000, he was also there 15 years with the same multiplier of 2%, we get 18,000. Now when we add together just these two here, we find that Brian's pension is $51,000 per year. And so the difference between the two 
it looks like here, Marina's going to get $66,000 each year. Brian's going to get $15,000 less at $51,000 a year. I took the $66,000, subtracted the $51,000 for a difference of $15,000 per year. Quite a difference when they both worked in the same field but at different companies. So it sounds like it pays to stay at one company for a while. What would Brian's average salary have been um, for his first job so that the total of pensions matched Marina's amount? Well, in order for them to have been the same, and I'm just going to go through here, his set, that first job, his last three years also, would have had to have averaged 110000 because then it would have been the 110000 times the 15 years times the multiplier of two, which we already calculated at 33000 And then his second job would have had to have been the same. All the information would have been the same. And so when we add those together, we get the same $66,000 that Marina would have been in. Now understand that this is unlikely because usually in people's careers, they are earning less earlier in their career and then they earn more as their career pro progresses. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the last example here. We've got here that Ann's employer offers a pension plan that calculates the annual pe pension as a product of the final three years of the average salary and the number of years of service and a 2% multiplier, just like before. Her company, her employer uses a graded six-year vesting formula after five years and decides to leave her job. So what that means is basically they do not get the full 100% until they've been with the company for six years. And so she's leaving after five years, so what she's going to get is 80% of that pension. So her average salary over the last three years was 50000 She has the multiplier. She's looking at being there for five years and a multiplier of 0.02 which means her full pension would have been $5,000. We see here though, because she's only gonna be there five years, she gets 80% of that. So we take 5,000 times 0.80, which is 80% is a decimal, and we find that she is going to receive an annual benefit of 4,000 per year. All right, go ahead and complete the final you do. Press pause when you're ready, come back, and this is the last one. We'll finish it up. Okay, using the vesting schedule from example five, Ralph is leaving his company after four years. It's the same multiplier of 0 .02, and his average salary was $38,500. When multiplying those together, I get $3,080. Now, if we look back at the chart, we find at the end of four years that he is going to get 60% of that $3,080. So our last step, we're going to take the $3,080, multiply it by 0.60, and his annual pension from this company is going to be $1,848. And that's it for 9.3. Good job, everyone.